everybody. Today the bookworms are going to be reading Mr. Perfect by Roger Hargreaves. It was a perfect summer's day, and on this perfect summer's day, Mr. Perfect was looking even more perfect than usual. He didn't have a hair out of place. Mr. Perfect lived in a tip-top cottage, and on this perfect summer's day, his house was also looking even more perfect than usual. Not a curtain out of place. I suppose you're wondering why Tip Top Cottage was looking so perfect. I shall tell you. It was Mr. Perfect's birthday and he was going to have a party. There was a knock at the door. Perfect, cried Mr. Perfect. How very kind of you, he said, when he saw that all his guests had brought wonderful looking presents. Please do come in, and if no one minds, we'll open the presents later. Nobody minded in the least. Well, almost nobody. What's that? roared Mr. Upty. I don't have any time to waste, you know. You'd better make sure we don't get bored today. Do you think this upset Mr. Perfect? Of course not. Mr. Perfect had perfect manners, unlike rude Mr. Upty. Oh no, my dear Mr. Upty, we shan't be bored today, he replied. First of all, we shall dance. And everybody danced, even Mr. Upty. But although he danced, Mr. Upty couldn't manage a smile. Unfortunately, Mr. Clumsy, being his usual clumsy self, broke a pile of plates. Do you think this upset Mr. Perfect? Not at all. Don't worry, Mr. Clumsy, said Mr. Perfect. And, being the perfect person he was, and not in the least bit clumsy, he produced a whole lot more plates. Made of cardboard. Then he brought in a cake. It was huge. It looked wonderful. It smelled terrific. And... Mr. Greedy thought it tasted delicious. He gobbled up the whole cake in three seconds flat. There wasn't a crumb left for anybody else. Do you think this upset Mr. Perfect? Not in the least. Being perfect, he had already guessed what would happen. Quickly, he brought out lots of small cakes. There was plenty for everybody, even Mr. Perfect. But as he was not greedy, he only ate one. One cake was just perfect for him. Once everything had been eaten, Mr. Perfect opened his presents. He said as many thank yous as he there were presents. Well, not quite. What about my present? cried Mr. Mean. Mr. Mean's parcel was so small that Mr. Perfect had not seen it. Mr. Perfect opened the tiny parcel wrapped in newspaper. Oh, Mr. Mean, said Mr. Perfect, you've given me a lump of coal. How kind of you. It's delightful. If I'd known, I'd only given him a half a lump grumbled Mr. Mean. That's it! I've had enough! cried Mr. Upty suddenly. I'm fed up with you, Mr. Perfect. And you know why? I'll tell you. I have discovered that there is most enormously unbearable expatriating fault with you. Would you be so kind as to tell me what that might be? asked Mr. Perfect as politely as ever. Don't you understand? cried Mr. Upty. Your fault is... That you have no faults. The end. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more read-alongs. Until next time, bye!